Uh, I am standing outside of the iconic 601 Lexington Avenue. For those of you from New York City, you might recognize this as the old City Court building. It's no longer called that. The reason why we're standing out here with Matt Capel from Swift Connect is that they have implemented employee badge in Apple Wallet for all the tenants to get into this space. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but if I work here, I'm presenting my phone to the turnstile to go upstairs. And, you're, and in some cases, your phone to the reader upstairs, you're getting into that suite level space as well. One of the things that people talk about with employee badge in Apple Wallet is maybe a, a higher level of complexity. Right, this is not like a card working with a reader that right. talks to a panel. There's a little bit more going on behind the scenes. And that's why I brought Matt here because Swift Connect is one of those integration pieces that sort of, what I like to say is like it's the straw that stirs the drink. It's the thing that makes all the cool connections happen. So Matt, can you talk about what Swift Connect is, how it works, and why they're using it here? Sure, so we're the easy button for complexity for all the Apple Wallet deployments and all of the other system integrations that have to happen. So we connect to access control systems downstairs, access control systems upstairs, um, credential providers like HID in this case, um, as well as sources of truth for who the users are, uh, Active Directory, Okta, to basically automate down so when someone is eligible for a credential, they're able to sign into an app, any app that we power with SSO and MFA, click add to wallet, and then when that credential gets into their, uh, into their phone and into their watch, they're able to um, tap at the reader downstairs because we've already put those credentials in the access control system, and then tap at the reader upstairs because we've already put those credentials in the access control system. If you're permitted in to those places at that time, you'll get right in easily. So that's one of the things that differentiates an employee badge and Apple wallet from a simple card-based system or even a, uh, a mobile access or a Bluetooth low energy solution in that the provisioning is 100% self-service, right? It's driven by the individual as opposed by the organization. That's right, self-serve, on-demand, real-time, remote provisioning of credentials and permissions. And so the thing that powers that, obviously with Swift Connect, is the fact that all of those integrations are set up uh, well ahead of time, well in advance. Nobody's requesting a, a credential and then having to talk to the card office or the badge office. They're just opening up their employee app and saying add to wallet. That's completely right. Obviously there's an audit trail for the badge office to, 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 to look at afterwards, but there's no human intervention involved. This is like seconds from when you click add to wallet to when that credential is in the access system and ready to go. Yeah, you know, it's funny you say that. So I just did a, a blog post, uh, I'll leave a link to it down below, talking about the layered approach to security. But what I found in my research was an organization like this that probably has upwards of 20, 30, 40,000 cardholders potentially, that organization churns through about 20% of its cards just through attrition. So I lost it, it was stolen, yada, yada, yada. And it takes about 12 and a half minutes to uh, reprovision a physical credential. And 12 and a half minutes doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're talking about 20% of that many people, it's a lot of time. Yeah. Whereas this completely turns that on its head. Yeah, maybe 12 and a half seconds. There you go. So if I were an employee here, what's my experience? like today, right? Yeah. Am I walking in there just with my phone or my watch and walking through the turnstile or do I have to request a credential? How does it work? So once provisioned, you just walk in, tap your phone or your watch, the phone could be black screen, the phone could be dead, the watch could be black screen, and you just tap against the reader that you normally tap against and you get in, and then the same for upstairs, assuming you have permissions. Sure. On a um, first time experience, a provisioning experience, um, for some customers, the, um, the app is actually pushed down to the phone by the MDM that's already on their phone. Oh, really? Yes. Okay, so they don't so, have to download an app, they don't have to uh, uh, you know, go through that whole process. It's pushed down automatically. It's vetted, obviously, by their internal IT uh, security team, their CISO. Yep. And, um, and so they'll wake up you know, one morning, the app will be on the phone, they'll get some instructions to go, uh, uh, go into the app. They'll sign in with SSO. If the SSO and the MDM work together properly, you actually don't have to type anything in. No username or password, it just, it just works. And then you'll see if, if that app has other features, you might see all those other features. If that app is a simple provisioning app, you would just see the add to Apple Wallet button. I see. Coming wow. into the base building now, obviously there's multiple tenants in this building, so how does that work? That is the same credential that I use to get through the turnstile the same credential that I'm using? Like, what's that experience look like? So to the user, it looks like one credential in wallet. 
It just, it's, it's got your company logo on it, company, your name maybe, and it's sitting there along with your credit cards and your boarding passes and your loyalty cards and everything else that, that's right. great about Wallet. Um, under the hood though, there's actually multiple things going on. And so um, you're given a, a, a certain number of credentials based on where you're allowed to have access. And then um, based on the reader that you're touching the phone or the watch against, the phone knows what to do, what you're right. to present. So let me ask you this, and I, I think maybe some of the systems integrators that are watching this are uh, maybe having the same question. Let's say base building has, I don't know, I'm just going to throw it out because I'm a former Genetech guy. So yep. let's say the base building has Genetech practices control, and let's say subtenant B has Linnell. Sure. How does that work? Does your software sort of normalize that process? That's right. So we have integrations with those and dozens of other access control systems. Ah. And so we connect to those systems. It's at this point pretty easy for us to do since we've done it dozens and dozens of times. And so we are then able to inject users, credentials, permissions, whatever um, you have to into those systems at the time the user clicks add to wallet. So there's no extra provisioning process? No. No. So, okay, so just, just to make sure I'm clear, I go through that process one time, and that credential works not just in the base building, but also in my, sub, in my tenant space without me having to go through and request another credential. That's right, and if you get a new phone, or if you lose your phone, and then you have to get a, a new device, um, or you have a phone and then you add a watch to it, all of these things also happen automatically. So if I, if I mark my phone as lost, those credentials are taken out of the system or they're deactivated from the system. If I get a new phone and provision new credentials to that new device, they're then automatically put into that system. There's no human intervention at all during any of the lifecycle processes that go on. See, I think this is, like obviously the user experience, Apple products, right? We're, we're filming this on an iPhone 14 yeah. Pro Max. I got my Apple Watch. I got my MacBook over there. Like Apple makes a fantastic product and user experience is key. But I think for our industry in particular, in the access control space, the provisioning process is this thing that has been like from a bygone era where you have to go to the card office and you have to be provisioned a credential. And in this type of environment, that was maybe having to carry multiple credentials. That's right. That's right. And then if you lose that card, what does that process look like? Your first day onboarding, I have to go to this office and get a pass for the base building. And if I By lose the way, it. a delay in getting, you may not get it for a week or more right. from when you first onboard. And, so. and by the way, a lot of um, folks that are going through the college education process, a lot of colleges are implementing student ID in Apple Wallet, so they've become used to using their phone and their That's watch right. and their devices to get through doors, and then they come to a beautiful building like this, and it's like, oh, I need a plastic yep. card in my wallet. Well, obviously not in this building, which is fantastic. You know, the, the thing that we like to say is, obviously we love Apple, we both love Apple. They make a great product. Fantastic. It's a great yep. experience. It's, the best mobile access experience that's ever existed, right? But the value in this for an integrator, for an enterprise, for a landlord, uh, for a card office, is not about moving from atoms to bits, meaning the car to the phone. It's about automating everything. That's it. And it's about bringing physical security in line with IT security. Right. And it's about the self-serve, on-demand, real-time, remote experience. So if people want to learn more yeah. about Swift Connect, where do they go? How do they get in touch with you and your team? So you can go to swiftconnect.io. Um, there's a contact page there. Re reach out there. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to help you move on this journey and transform uh, to not just employee badge and Apple Wallet, but full automation of uh, credentials and permissions, uh, obviously mobile credentials first, um, uh, in, your, in your organization. And uh, yeah, doing it in partnership with, with HID has been great. Final question, I probably should have asked this earlier, but I'll ask it now anyway. If someone still has physical cards, can physical cards still work of course. In, this, in this solution? Yeah, so physical cards still work. There's nothing that deploying this precludes from the past. Um, you could still have users that have physical cards um, as well as mobile credentials. There may be other use cases where a physical card is, is necessary. Um, but yeah, this doesn't preclude anything you've already done um, whatsoever. Fantastic. Well, I'm Phil Coppola with HID, the mobile evangelist here. If you have any questions about anything we just discussed today, drop me a comment down below. I'll also include all my contact information down here. You can get in touch with me very easily. And uh, do go to swiftconnect.io to get in touch with Matt and his team. And we hope you have a great day, and we'll see you on the next one.